What is up guys? Welcome back to the Lumsden Motorsports Garage. I'm Wade Lumsden uh, and today we're still working on the tough truck. So kind of go over stuff that we did um, I know I showed you we did uh, hood pins uh, didn't really show you how we did it we took a nice piece of flat and welded it to the uh, to the body here and uh, that way it would distribute um, the load rather than every time I've tried to put something directly to this thin stuff it always it always just rips out so uh, we put something something across to uh, uh, help support that so um, and we also got new air cleaner it didn't have one before so um, yay uh, also the carburetor um, when I t was tearing it apart I misplaced one of the little itty bitty tiny clips um, I went to Home Depot and they managed to have have one it's the clip that keeps the arm for the choke on so um, I managed to find one of those and uh, got that installed there um, and oh this is this one's kind of exciting check this out guys we have bedsides woo woo <laughs> all gutted out see they're all gutted out and uh, right now this is just kind of sitting here. I found, went and bought me a gas cap because I didn't have a gas cap before. Um, this is just kind of sitting here so I can get gas in it. I'll probably, because um, I don't like where it's sitting, I'll probably end up folding it over and uh, tying it off while I'm racing. But uh, yeah, uh, kind of uh, temporary body mounts, you know what I mean? Like they're good and solid but if they take a really big shot they're probably coming off but there we go um, it kind of angles down a little bit in the back and one side has a little bit bigger of a gap than the other side but you know this is a 50 footer looks good from 50 feet away or looks good when it's 50 feet in the air that would be scary 50 feet in the air would be scary <laughs> Um, one of the next things that we did is boom we got some tires mounted up now I did try to uh, mount tires by myself um, without a machine doing it with just tire spoons and stuff um, and the result was I messed up the bead of one of my tires um, so that kind of stinks but um, that's okay I have some other ideas on what I'm gonna do here um, those in the back of the truck are 285 75 R16s um, which I happen to have one on the left front here you can see now it doesn't look like there is a whole lot of room for that tire in there so what I'm gonna do is um, I actually, between all the random stuff I have sitting around here, I have two 265 set. Well, one's a 265 75 R16, the other one's a um, 265 75 R like 16.5. So the only difference is the basically the rim, um, but. I'll probably put both of those on the front and run the 285s on the rear because I've got all the room in the world for tires in the back. And since we're kind of back here talking about um, suspension, <laughs> I need to show you this. I, uh, this truck was super bouncy, super bouncy. And I think we figured out why. So this truck was super bouncy and I think we figured out why. This was a front shock. Ooh. 
Like, it's a rod. There's no, there's no resistance to that whatsoever. Um, the other front shock. Like, yeah, they were garbage. Um, the rear shock. Now, I couldn't really test the rear shock because of the coilover, but uh, I'm assuming that since it looks like the seal down inside there is completely gone, um, that the shock on this is gone too. So, so I decided to replace the shocks. Now, here we go. This is where, I don't know if I made good decisions, bad decisions, okay decisions, or whatever, but I went and bought myself a set of uh, Skyjacker shocks. Um, I believe they're the Skyjacker 8000, so the nitrogen ones. Um, the truck is a lot stiffer than it was. <laughs> Or, or rather, it doesn't, it doesn't continue to bounce for near as long. <laughs> um, so the shocking, the shocks do what they're supposed to do, which is great. But here's where the bad decisions might have come in. Um, I bought the biggest shocks that I thought I could put on here. Um, the only problem with that is I am dealing with my bump stops here, which are, um, let me let me get down. Okay, my bump stops that are right there, right? They are a rubber bump stop. Now I did this on the front and the rear. Technically, where my shocks will bottom out, um, that bump stop will have to stop the travel of the um, suspension uh, before it gets a half inch away from the frame. So those bump stops are about two and a half, three inches tall. Um, and if I hit really, really hard and I squish that bump stop from the two and a half, three, three inches tall that it is down to say, down to that half inch, it's gonna bottom the shock out and probably blow the shock. But if it stops it before, then I'm good to go. Um, and I kind of did the same thing on the front end. Um, <laughs> so, fingers crossed, but let me show you. Um, new shocks in here. Check that out. Now what's cool about these shocks um, is they actually have about two inches more travel downward um, <clears throat> than what the suspension would sag at so um just to be safe uh, i i didn't know if you know sending this thing off a jump would allow that to sag way farther you know just from the forces built up and and you know the exploding of the spring or whatever so i went and got some limiting straps and i basically limited the suspension right to where it naturally sags so uh just kind of a safety deal i guess to keep them from blowing from full extension uh will it work i don't know but we're gonna find out um <clears throat> now another little update uh it's still burning that god awful gas smell um so i went ahead and put a couple of things of sea foam in it and i put um, 10 gallons of gas in it and we're gonna try to run this thing to get rid of a whole bunch of that smell uh, but still have a bunch of work to do today um, gonna add uh, the passenger side bar and hopefully we're gonna get a bar added up behind the front bumper to help support that up there um, I gotta still build my top for my battery box and uh, you know there's there's a handful of things to do here um, it is currently Wednesday so like today is the do or die date um, <clears throat> the list is small at least I think the list is small um, <laughs> except for this little doohickey going on here 
Yeah, I had to hook it to a battery charger. Um, I just tested the voltage output that I'm getting from my alternator and I'm not getting anything from my alternator. So, joys. Um, I don't know if it's the alternator, I don't know if it's the, um, you know, uh, external regulator, I, I, I have no idea. I, I just found it before I picked up the camera. So, um, if I get a chance, I will look at that. If not, I will race it as is and just make sure the battery is charged. Kind of like a regular stock car, right? <laughs> she kind of sounds like one, so uh, what's wrong with that? Um, something else that I really need to look at here. I'm looking at my brake booster. And my brake master cylinder here. And it's really wet. Like, really wet. I'm curious if when the brakes get stepped on if it's squirting out of here or or if it's coming out of the cap or I don't know uh, when my help gets here uh, I will definitely have to look into that get somebody to step on the brake and see if it squirts or um, see what the heck's going on but we're getting there uh, I'm gonna put some type of grill up front to protect in fact I already started it um, I got some chicken wire. I got me some chicken wire here. We gonna put that up front, up on the thing up in there. Um, protector from the rocks and stuff. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I got a handful of those types of little things to do. All right, we're gonna get to work. Wish me luck. We gotta get it finished today so that it can head out like tomorrow or something. So, all right. Let's get to work. All right, we've already been messing with the truck for a little while, um, dealing with carburetor issues. But, like I promised, I told you I would introduce you to Kyle. Say hi, Kyle. Hello. <laughs> He's the one that's been doing like 99.9999999% of the welding <laughs> on, <laughs> on this truck. Uh, couldn't have done it without Kyle. How you doing? You know? Good. Tell, tell the world you're ready to get back into a race car, and then I'm we'll ready. show your wife. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty ready to get back in a race car. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got him convinced.
how are things going? This is where I'm at currently. Carburetor rebuild, because I can't figure out why it's fallen on its face. All right, <clears throat> got it rebuilt, got it on. I, uh, it's currently like, oh, let me see. Yeah, it's currently midnight. Um, I put it on, I started it. I can't go revving it up like crazy to see if it falls on its face or not. Um, but, uh, I'm going to uh, get it pulled out so I can shut the garage and get cleaned up here a little bit. Um, tomorrow morning, I'll get it fired up, I'll let it warm up, and we'll see if uh, see if the complete rebuild fixed it. All right, guys, so rebuilt the carburetor last night. Um, it was like really, really late, so I couldn't rev it up. Um, the truck did start and back itself out of the garage at an idle. Um, I didn't rev it up because, you know, no exhaust and I don't want to piss off my neighbors. Uh, so we're gonna open up the hood here, fire it up, hopefully she revs up now. And then if she does, maybe we'll uh, take it for a drive and uh, see if there's no longer gonna be any, you know, uh, performance issues there. <laughs> so let's uh, see if it fires up. Sweet. Um, and actually, I don't want you to think that I just walked out here and fired this truck up and <clears throat> started revving the crap out of it. Um, I actually came out and started it and let it idle for about 25 minutes so it would be warm um, for this. But I never revved it up, so that was the first time that it revved up. No issues, it seems. It revs fast um, when you get on. When, well, it doesn't rev fast, but when you slam on the throttle, it revs up rather than stumbling and falling on its face. So. Um, yeah, victory is ours. Uh, still a handful of things to do. It is uh, currently, what is it, Thursday? Yeah, this thing's supposed to race tomorrow. And so is my modified. So uh, <laughs> I, I gotta get this thing finished. Um, I'm gonna cruise it up the road real quick and back uh, just to make sure that all is well there. And um, yeah, finish up some of the small stuff.
guys, uh, according to the list, it looks like all I gotta do is uh, <clears throat> change the oil. Um, adding to that list because the alternator's not putting anything out. I think it's the uh, external regulator. Um, and I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do the external regulator before this truck has gotta go bye-bye. Um, again, still gotta get my modified ready to race, right? So, um, <clears throat> we'll just let it go and I'll just make sure the, the battery's supercharged. Um, but changing the oil and <clears throat> I, I think we're good to go. I don't know. Um, truck's starting to run better. She runs really good. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of power, right? It's just a stock 351 from 1985 that's been sitting for forever. So uh, she's still burning some bad gas out of the gas tank. So, um, it, you know, when I first picked up the truck, it really didn't have anything in it. Um, but, you know, it's it's cleaned out the inside of the tank now with all the gas that I have put in it. So it's, ugh. Um, <laughs> ugh, is what it is. Um, but it, it, it'll burn through it, I think, I hope. Um, so yeah, change the oil and I think this thing is at least ready for Octane Fest this year. Uh, kind of cross my fingers and hope that she performs well and we have fun and survives to where we can Frankenstein her out somewhere, you know, get get crazy, maybe do some long travel stuff or whatever, but we'll see. At least uh, at least we got it figured out. Now, <clears throat> the biggest struggle that I'm facing right now, because uh, an oil change is easy, biggest struggle I'm facing right now is I gotta figure out how to get it to Fallon. Um, my trailer is too small. Um, and my trailer also has to take the modified out to Fallon. Um, I don't have a flatbed trailer and my dad uh, got it brought into me on a flatbed and that, that option's not available. So uh, yeah, uh, hopefully I can find somebody with a flatbed trailer that's willing to take it out to Fallon either today or tomorrow so that we can tough truck it. So, um, cause that would be a really long way to drive with expired plates. <laughs> All right, well, let's give you a, a view of everything I've done and, uh, and where she sits right now, so. All right, you guys saw me working up here a little bit. Um, all I did, and the pop rivets are in random, random places because all I did was use the holes that were originally in the grill, but I put some chicken wire up in front of the radiator um, just to protect it from rocks and things like that, or, you know, giant dirt clods putting a ginormous hole into the radiator. Is it perfect? Is it what I would really, really love for a grill? No, but it works. Uh, I've done it on hobby stocks and stuff for a really long time like that, except for I usually try to make it a two-piece, mount something solid, and then behind it or in front of it, uh, mount something, uh, another one, but has some weights but and allows it to swing so it bounces on it, so it, it bounces the mud off, um, keep it from getting plugged and um, or anything like that. So um, one last look under the hood, I guess, here. Yeah, so our welded in hood pins, air cleaner, um, got the battery all moved. Uh, I think everything under here is gonna be pretty good to go. Um, I do have a power steering link. Uh, that's kind of an oh well moment. Uh, it's, it stays in there long enough for me to put some in it and run it for a weekend, so. Uh, it's not like god awful terrible. So, close this back up. I put some 265s, um, which, in my opinion, I think it has. I think it has better clearance up front, like that, anyways. So, um, 265s up front, and uh, 285s in the back. Um, not bad for tires that were just laying around right so um, we threw a couple patches on the floor here 
uh, nothing fancy. Uh, you probably saw me filing around uh, to round out the edges here, um, just to keep stuff from getting, you know, caught on my foot or whatever. Um, you've seen the dash already; it's nice and solid. But I added roll bar padding right here because basically my arm is going to be right up against that. Um, and this is real roll bar padding from Summit Raceway. Is actually the leftover stuff from doing my modified. Uh, not not a pool noodle. Um, you you can, <laughs> I guess, if you're doing super cheap, super cheap you can go get a pool noodle. But um, that's real roll bar padding. Um, and you saw we got the bed sides hung. Awesome. I got a gas cap. Um, I still got to figure out what I'm going to do with all this. This is just random wire and a bungee cord sitting up here uh, holding this up for right now. But most likely what is going to happen is it'll get folded in and maybe tied in up there or something. I don't know. Oh, it just needs to be tied up out of the way. And I don't really want to attach it to the square tube here. Again, uh, those body mounts are more for holding it and if they break away they break away type of deal you know um, i wasn't really too concerned with whether the bedsides stayed with me or not <laughs> um, we finished up our battery top there a piece of aluminum we welded when i say we kyle welded some all thread to the side and we ran it up and just used a piece of uh, aluminum to strap it down with um, I will probably try to figure out how to, in some way, shape, or form, cover the positive battery terminal just in case something were to happen. Um, that positive battery terminal is covered. Um, it's usually something we require, you know, all the way around. Of course, we changed out the shocks. You already seen that. Did springs. Pulled out some. Pulled out some of the leafs. Um, yeah, I mean truck is truck now man uh, uh, passenger side uh, again a couple more patches uh, I think I'm gonna do a couple more zip ties for this wonderful rat's nest here but I mean it's pretty it's pretty much there uh, I think I need to um, empty out and make sure that the cab is empty you can see you look around in here and there's some screws and some loose wire and some old you know plastic clips and things like that i need to make sure that it's empty empty uh but you guys don't really need to see that it's a matter of sweeping it out vacuuming it out hosing it out one both all three whatever uh, so that ain't no thing really but uh yeah here we go tough truck guys There she is. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this goes well. Um, oh yeah, I'm over here. Here, new shock, limit strap. Um, and so for my right front tire, left front tire, these were the only 265s that I could find that had a little bit of tread on them. Um, they have some tread on them, but like the left front is a 265-75 R16 this tire over here is a 265-75 R16.5 so um, uh, so it's a different wheel but um, it's gonna work just fine it's the right lug pattern um, good news is, is I have a 285 that came off the left front that'll be a spare and then I have another 265 uh, that, <laughs> that came off the truck that can be a spare but look at this thing there is there is nothing nothing left <laughs> so that's a in desperation spare for the front so i got one spare for the front one spare for the rear um which is heck man that's sometimes that's more spares than i have for my modified so <laughs> like <laughs> i can't complain <laughs> all right something else that we got added that i didn't that I almost forgot to show you was uh, we put a bar in between the frame. See the roll bar up there? 
in between the frame um, to help stiffen that up a little bit. This bumper is pretty thin, um, though it does have a bunch of creases on it, which you know strengthens it up. But um, it just wasn't quite enough, in my opinion. And you can see how we had to get it in there. If you look, there's a hole drilled right there, inch and a half hole saw to be able to fish that piece of pipe in there because the frame didn't allow us to get it up in there and just set it in there. So, um, but it's in. <laughs> oh, and then of course the fun, fine little detail things that nobody ever thinks of, right? Until you just look at it and go, oh, that's probably a bad idea. Uh, here's a antenna. Woo. Um, just whipping around like crazy. Now, all of the stuff inside still has the ability to have a stereo put in. Um, so I don't know if I just want to rip the antenna out. When I run the tough truck, um, we're required to roll, if you have windows, you're required to roll the windows down so that they're inside the door. Um, so that they can't, if they shatter, they shatter inside the door. So I think what I'm gonna do here, is I'll fold this down. Woo! Maybe I'll fold this down with one hand. Here, I'll put it inside up here and I'll zip tie it to, uh, to the roll bar and then it'll just kinda, woo! Almost whipped myself in the face with that thing. Um, and then it'll just kinda sit there. Um, and then I can deal with it later. All right guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully the next videos that you see will be at the racetrack uh, for Octane Fest, June 11th and 12th, Friday, Saturday in Fallon, Nevada. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're having figure eight races, demo derbies, the tough trucks, uh, circle track races. Uh, you know, it's gonna be a great time. So um, if you can, try to come. But uh, hopefully the next videos that you see will be race footage of this truck and the IMCA Modified Whew. running out of time. Um, now I gotta get the Modified ready. I'm gonna do that stuff off camera because there's really not a whole lot for me to do. Um, it's more just the regular general maintenance type stuff for the Modified. Um, and here's the hoping that I can find somebody that's willing to um, tow this tough truck out to the out to Fallon for me. Um, so I better start making some phone calls. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what we're doing here. Um, always, you know, can comment questions, comments, concerns down below. Uh, let me know if you'd have done something better. If you have a awesome idea that I can try to implement on something, you know, um, this tough truck. It's sad, but I planned on doing it for a long time. And then when it came time to do it, I ended up with only three weeks. And two weeks of that, I ended up spending traveling for work. So um, this was a really slam bam, thank you ma'am, as quick and dirty as we possibly could get it done. And I, man, it's done. Uh, it's, it's gonna go race. So uh, again, I just gotta change the oil. Um, I'm gonna do that off camera. You guys don't need to see an oil change, but uh, I really, really, really gotta thank Kyle. Um, it, he he came over here. He put in a lot of time um, and a lot of hours on this truck with me. Um, and it, I just can't thank him enough because I don't think I'd have gotten it done um, without him. I really don't. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Kyle, thank you. Um, you guys thank Kyle too because you know without him we wouldn't get some of the hopefully some awesome footage during Octane Fest. So again, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you next time around here in oh you know tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow it races. So <laughs> nothing like doing everything last minute. If it wasn't for the last minute, nothing would get done. We'll catch you next time. Alright guys, let's go for a drive.